As we all wait eagerly for Ross Atkins to finally make a move this offseason, more and more reports are circulating, highlighting what Ross Atkins' plan might be. And a recent report has come out suggesting that the Jays are very aggressively pursuing J.D. Martinez. We're going to break down that report in this episode of Jays Digest, as well as trade rumors. They continue to circulate, and we're going to highlight a couple of trade targets that the Jays are reportedly pursuing. So stay tuned for all that and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? Nick Oscar, host of Jays Digest. And as we all eagerly wait every single day, patiently for some, obviously some of you guys might not be as patient, for Ross Atkins to make a move. We're just waiting for hopefully something to go down soon, but more and more reports are continuing to come out, continue to escalate, and continue to circulate, specifically regarding a couple of key players. So we're going to break all that down. Before we do, a quick reminder to hit the subscribe button. About 70% of you guys who are watching right now aren't subscribed. We're on the road to 11,500, so scroll down. If you enjoy Daily Jays content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And let's get right into the video on the first topic of the day, which is Jays are seriously interested in JD Mart- Martinez. So, This came out a few days ago from a different reporter, and then we had another reporter come out yesterday doubling up on this, and this seems to kind of align with what Ross Atkins and what we're hearing Ross Atkins is interested in doing. So this came out again around yesterday. It said, Blue Jays have interest in J.D. Martinez. It was actually December 14th at uh, 1 o'clock during the day. And J.D. Martinez, we've discussed him in the past. This was from Keegan Matheson. So it says, as they look for ways to bolster their lineup this winter, the Blue Jays have some serious interest in veteran slugger J.D. Martinez, according to Keegan Matheson of MLB. Dot com. And it basically goes on to say there's a clear opening at DH, especially now that Otani is no longer on the table. And J.D. Martinez is a guy we've discussed in the past. He's very interesting. And I put a tweet out kind of asking, would you rather J.D. Martinez or Jorge Soler on a Jays Digest Twitter? And it was kind of a, a bit of a mixed bag, but most people actually said J.D. Martinez. Now, when you're looking at his stats, obviously last season he was incredible, near 900 OPS. 2022, he was still solid, near 800, but not as good as, of course, in 2023. And then 2021, he had also, again, a near 800 OPS. And when you look at the advanced baseball savant metrics, Good Lord, he is crazy. He's almost 100 percentile on all the important stats. And he's a guy that, again, is a primary and only really plays DH at this point of his career. And that's a little bit of a worry. Obviously, this article says that they do have a DH spot open, of course, kind of replacing Brandon Belt. But the question is, will the Jays want to tie up a full-time DH slot with the likes of Alejandro Kirk and Danny Jensen on the team? Kirk obviously isn't the best runner. He likes to get pinch ran for a lot. So having that you know, pinch running spot open. Having the DH spot completely allocated by a primary DH makes things much more difficult for John Schneider when you're looking at lineup construction. Last season with Brandon Belt, he was not a only DH. He, of course, played first base. He gave Vladdy some days off. And I think maybe J.D. Martinez can play some first base. But at this point of his career, he's a primary DH. And again, is that something the Toronto Blue Jays want to do? Or would they rather get a guy like Jorge Soler who can, in theory, play the outfield, maybe play a bit of first base? Um... But J.D. Martinez is not necessarily the guy. And look, you look at his position there, it says D.H. So he is mainly and will only play D.H. And that's something that's just, it ties up a lot of room going forward. And obviously, Soler doesn't play first base, but he plays outfield. He's not a great outfielder. But when you're comparing Soler and J.D. Martinez, some would lean towards Soler just because of the versatility. Because, yes, he's going to be a D.H. most of the time. But at least you can slide him into the outfield if John Schneider has maybe some injuries going down, some players need some rest. And we've seen that in the past with the versatility on our team. Whit Merrifield, Kevin Biggio, all these guys who can play multiple positions. When you're tying yourself up with a guy like J.D. Martinez, it gets interesting. But again, it goes on to say that he could sign Martinez and bring in a different left-handed bat to help. So this kind of highlights the fact that obviously Martinez is a right-handed belt, a bat. Maybe they could bring in Martinez and also bring in Cody Bellinger. And again, if I don't think Martinez would be the only move of this offseason. Obviously, it's just filling one supposed DH spot. But you also have to think about the catchers now with Alejandro Kirk and Danny Jansen. Both of those guys, you can either think of it in a positive way or a negative way. A positive way in the sense that you know, they get more rest. They'll get more rest going forward. They don't have to play as much going catcher and DH between Kirk and Jansen. But at the same time, if they're both playing well, you're going to have to sit one of them anyways because J.D. Martinez only DHs. So it's something to keep an eye on. Let me know what your thoughts are. And again, I asked you the question now again, like I asked it on Twitter, would you rather Jorge Soler or would you rather J.D. Martinez? Because it seems like the Jays are making a very strong push for J.D. Martinez. And I think ultimately they might grab him while also grabbing a guy like Cody Bellinger or maybe an outfield in a outfielder in a trade for potentially Alec Manoa. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. I want to bring up the question because it's a very interesting question. And the more you think about uh, an only a 
the guy who only plays DH, it makes things much more complicated, not only for next season, but just finishing off this offseason with some of their other acquisitions. But we'll move on to the next one now, which are trade rumors escalating. And trade... I, more and more reports are coming out essentially highlighting that the Toronto Blue Jays are going to look to make a trade. Whether that is in the form of an outfielder, whether that is in the form of trading Alec Manoa, we're unsure. But I found an article and it has a few different trades. I want to go over some of these trades with you all and I want to see if you guys would accept some of these trades. This is not necessarily a full-on report. It's a bit more speculation. I'll make that clear now. But let me know if you would take any of these trades. So this is the first potential trade we're going to get into today. And again, let me know in the comment section for each trade, what would you grade them? And would you potentially do these trades? Because it's coming out that the Jays are actively looking to make a trade. And I think what their plan will be is to sign a guy like JD Martinez, sign a guy like who are Jorge Soler, and then make a trade to fill in the other gaps. Or maybe re-sign Matt Chapman and then trade for an outfielder. So this one is Lane Thomas of the Washington Nationals, who is an outfielder. For Edison Berger, Spencer Horwitz, and Reiner Nunez. Now, if you all know about Lane Thomas, we discussed him last season extensively. He's a very good outfielder for the Washington Nationals. And again, take these values on the trade machine with a grain of salt. He basically goes on to say that Thomas is a 28-year-old uh, right-handed hitting outfielder. Two years of control left. Last season had 28 home runs, put up a 2.7 F4. So you're getting a, a solid outfielder to fill up that left uh, left field spot or wherever they decide to play him. And then you're giving up one of your top prospects in Berger and then Horwitz and Nunez, two guys who probably won't see much light of day for the Blue Jays at any point in their careers uh, because of the logjam there. So would you be willing to get a, a solid outfielder, nothing crazy, but around a 2.5 to 3 war outfielder in exchange for Addison Berger, who some people, including Peter, kind of want to see play this year it's an interesting one i'm not entirely sure if i'm sold on giving up addison berger i think he has a ton of potential his ceiling is through the roof and i think he has a chance depending on what they do with matt chapman to maybe get some major league time this year so let me know your thoughts are on this one but lane thomas is an extremely good player now let's move on to the next one now which is max kepler and jorge polanco for jimenez hayden jenger you say kikuchi and uh palmigiani i do not like this one for the blue jays for a few reasons obviously Kepler's a very solid outfielder he only has one year left in his contract and Polanco is a big home run hitting uh, second baseman who can play multiple positions but you're giving up a starter who's very valuable in Yusei Kikuchi one of your best prospects in Jimenez not one of your best prospects but an MLB ready prospect and Palmagiani who has been skyrocketing through the rankings in exchange for two very much so MLB ready guys, which is the big thing here. If you're trying to maximize your two year window, this trade would make a whole lot of sense as Kepler would fill in right in that left fielder where again, wherever outfield spot he would go and then Polanco would play second base and be able to mash and hit bombs. So it would make sense if you're trying to maximize that window. And I think depending on what other additions they make this season or this off season, it could potentially make sense if they're really going all in, but you'd be trading your prospects. You'd be trading your fifth starter and you say Kikuchi, or I guess in this case, he would be your fourth starter. If you're assuming Manoa is the fifth starter. So you you'd have some holes to fill and you're not getting a pitcher back in this scenario so maybe they would expect to trade one but i don't know let me know your thoughts are on that as we move into the final one which is cronenworth for hagen danner and nate pearson this one i'm going to throw in there very quickly uh, we've heard about jay cronenworth his contract is brutal he has seven more years for 78 million and but again the padres are trying to shed some salaries you would be getting a very solid utility player albeit with a lot of money left on his deal for essentially nothing in Hagen Danner and Nate Pearson. So this one's interesting. If you want to shore up your second base, your utility spot going forward, Cronenworth could be an interesting guy. But I think because they have Kevin Biggio, obviously uh, Jay Cronenworth has proved himself more at an MLB level for the Padres, earning himself that massive uh, AAV contract or yearly contract. Oh, seven years left is absurd. But let me know what your thoughts are on that. I just want to throw these out there because we're getting to the point now where I think a trade will go down soon. We'll probably have a live stream coming up shortly over the next couple of days, highlighting some of these trades and just seeing what we think will happen before it actually does because I suspect a trade to happen very very soon now one quick final bonus topic today before we do wrap up is on Shohei Otani this came out yesterday that the Blue Jays and the Giants had agreed to Otani's proposed contract term so I just want to throw this out there for all you that are wondering if the Blue Jays would have done the 10 years 700 million with all the money deferred the answer is unequivocally yes from Jeff Passan the Angels did not agree to it but the Blue Jays and Giants had agreed to the same contract which means Ultimately, Shohei Otani did not want to come to the Toronto Blue Jays. He wanted to stay with the Los Angeles Dodgers the whole time. And uh, the Jays were willing to spend $700 million, almost all of it deferred, to get the two-way superstar. Ultimately, it didn't happen, but it does show some good 
ambition going forward for any of these new stars that they want to acquire. Obviously, none of them will be as uh, you know money making per se as Shohei Otani, but it is good to see that they are willing to pay up big, and I think this will pay dividends going forward for future Japanese stars, for future free agents, and maybe even this off season with a guy like Cody Bellinger. But that are up in the video. Let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are on this. A lot of news is going down. We're just waiting for Ross Atkins to make a trade. And we'll be the first ones to cover for you here on Jay's Digest. But thank you guys for watching. If you want to check out my video from yesterday, click on your screen right now. And we will see you guys tomorrow.